In this video, let's divide up the reverb device into a couple different sections and then talk about input processing and the early reflections. So those are the first two categories. Next one is global, the diffusion network, and the output section. I also have an audio clip that's just a snare sample. So now let me turn off some of these parameters just so we can look at the input processing and the early reflections. We'll look at all of this in a later video. Okay, so we have the dry wet mix at 100% and we can hear what this reverb is doing to that signal. Okay, let's dial it back. And we're at 50-50. So first let's talk about input processing. This section deals with the audio before it gets processed with reverb. So we can EQ the snare or the audio before it gets reverb added to it. And this doesn't affect the dry signal at all. It only affects the wet. So we have a low cut. We can hear the lows of that reverb going away. We're just stopping any low frequencies from getting processed. We also have a high cut or a low pass. And of course, under each band, we have a frequency and we have bandwidth. It's almost like a gain for that frequency. Underneath that, we have the pre-delay. The pre-delay adds time between the dry signal and when reverb gets applied to that dry signal. So right now we have hardly any pre-delay going on here. And I'll slowly turn this up and we can hear how the dry and wet signal become separated more and more. So just a little bit of separation. A little more. And now it's becoming very evident. We can do something very dramatic. So the pre-delay can do a couple different things. It can help that dry signal pop through just a little bit easier. The dry signal is getting lost a little bit. Try adding a little bit of pre-delay and it will just creep out a little bit easier and a little bit more in the mix. We can also add color to our reverb. We can place our instrument in a desired space. So if I have the pre-delay turned up very high, our mind's eye can view a room that's very different than the pre-delay turned down low. With the pre-delay turned down low, it makes the room sound a little bit smaller. And if the pre-delay is turned all the way up, we have a humongous room. So next, let's talk about the early reflections area. The first thing we'll look at is spin. And this is a auto pan chorus -y type of effect. We can add some variation and modulation and movement to the early reflections. So here is with it off. And I'll slowly increase it. We can hear a little bit of movement there. And now we can really hear that spinny type modulation sound. Just one more type of color 
an interesting aspect we can add to the reverb. And finally, we will talk about shape. Now shape does a couple different things. I like to look at it kind of like a soft balance between the early reflection and the tail or the diffusion. And if I turn it all the way down, we will have a more gradual decay of the early reflections, which will mean the diffuse sound or the tail starts sooner and our reverb is a lot more smooth. Let's hit play and hear what that sounds like. And as I start turning the shape up, we have a faster decay of the early reflections. And the diffuse sound comes later. So we're separating the two different parts of the reverb. And this also helps us hear the original source a lot easier. So that's smooth. And there we have some separation. If I turn the wet dry up all the way, it's kind of like a bounce back type sound. And there's a smoother sound. So we're just separating or blending the early reflections with the tail or the diffusion network. So just do some experimenting with those parameters and you can start hearing their differences within different mixes and how those differences can be applied to different mixes. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next video.